Hey guys, I'm Fat Buddy Cat, and this is how to build a GX160R. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to use the OMB Warehouse Camshaft Installation Tool. This is designed and produced by Grey Goat Garage, so you already know it's the good stuff. Previously, I had swapped out the stock Honda GX160 camshaft for a slightly more aggressive unit out of a Tillotson 212R. This time we're going to take it a step further and install a Dynacams CM265, better known as the Super X. Last time I dropped this bad boy in I tried to spin it around and I couldn't. I was hitting somewhere on the intake lobe. I'm going to drop the cam in and then install the tool. If we look down inside, you can see that we have two lobes on the cam. The one furthest is the intake. The one closest is the exhaust. The intake is the one that is giving us trouble. The exhaust is not. Right now I have the exhaust turned up so it is at its closest point to the bottom of the cylinder. You can see right there. There is a Gapparino and we're talking a fat sixteenth anyway. What we're looking for is 30 thousandths. Now, let's take a look over here at the intake. Turn it. You see, we're hitting. I'll roll it around. Make sure that it's all the way in the journal. And I'm hitting again. Those two marks that I made, you're going in. One and two. Those are reference points marking the edge of the intake cam lobe. It looks like I have a little bit more on the left than I do on the right. So... I'm going to try to just reach in and make a mark here. I'll put it right on the edge of the cylinder, but I know that I'm taking the material below that. Anyways, we're only going for 30 thousandths, so I'll be taking it between those two reference points. I can now take this all apart, and we'll let's see if you can see the exhaust while you're in there. Beautiful. Definitely doesn't hit. You know what I'm saying? Not even close. So weird. Oh, yeah. We're going all the way around, baby. There ain't nothing stopping us now. Now we're going to give this thing the business. It's going to get soap and water, air dried with the shop vac, just like a day at the spa. Let that simmer. I have everything from the bottom end to the top end. It's all thoroughly cleaned, laid out, ready to install. I'm going to put the bottom end together, except I'm going to leave off the side cover so that we can use this tool one more time. 
I have the piston, the connecting rod and crank installed. This time around, I'm adding the genuine GX160 lifters. You can see that they are bottoming out on the block. They're not going all the way up into the boss. It shouldn't be an issue, but we're going to verify anyway. You could also look at this as if you were doing custom push rods or a custom push rod and lifter combination. I'm going to drop the cam in and get our tool back on. I'm now adding my Mondo head studs. I take two of the nuts and lock them together and that helps to seat the threads. I'm not tightening them. I'm just making sure that the threads are all in there. I'll have to use a wrench and my socket to break those apart. Otherwise, you'll just back it right out. It's that loose. This piston is 12 thousandths in the hole. To get our 30 thousandths piston to head clearance, we're going to be using an 18 thousandths head gasket. Everything's looking nice and straight. Now, I'll lower the head on. Make sure we get on those dowels down below. I like to go around the four nuts with a regular ratchet first juggle between them and I just seat the head to the block barely squishing the gasket now I'm going to grab my big torque wrench and I'm going to set these at a whopping 20 foot pounds whoa now 10 millimeter loosens up the two nuts on my champion rockers once those are backed off It'll be easier to feed my push rods down in and then set the rockers over them. Once the push rods are in and you snug your nuts down so they don't fall out, and then take a ratchet and I tighten them just a little bit past snug. Now I'm going to check these rockers. I had already lashed these. I'm going to lash them again, but I want to make sure they can move freely at this point. I'm going to set these nuts to 94 inch pounds. You don't want constant tension on your rockers at any point when you do that. If they were freshies, I'd just back those right off. Let's just say I know I'm going to have a little something there, so 94 inch pounds it is. I run my engines a little bit tight. This one's at .002. I hug the exhaust and I kiss the intake. So they're both the same. This one's just a little bit tighter. To make spinning the crank easier, I just installed my woodruff key and we'll get a flywheel on there with a nut. It's going to be a little wobbly, but we're just making use of the keyway on the shaft. Yeah, buddy. Let me get this thing positioned. I'm telling you multiple uses. I'm about to show you how important this is. If you look up inside, here's our intake lobe. 
right now I have the crank turned so that we are at full lift we're completely engaging the lifter that means the intake valve is all the way open if we look down underneath the cam gear you can see this tiny space that is between the lifter and the block when we installed those lifters they bottomed out on the block if that space wasn't there we would have to clearance the block so that the cam could completely engage the lifter and open the valve now the exhaust valve is closed now it's open Wish. There's one more important clearance that I want to learn how to check. In the meantime, I'm going to get this bottom end lubricated and sealed up. Have a good night, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.